is now let's talk about orchestrating with serverless tasks. So tasks in Snowflake have come a long way in a short amount of time. Um, and one of the things that's been added fairly recently is the ability to have serverless tasks. So what's the difference between a regular task and a serverless task? Uh, so let's talk about that. Um, when we create a serverless task, what that allows us to do is it allows us to rely on uh, compute resources managed by Snowflake instead of our, us managing which warehouse the task is going to use. So what that means is basically we could have a task that's running and we're telling Snowflake, you go ahead and you look and, and using the history of this task running, you decide what size warehouse this task uh, should use. And, and then that can change. And we'll talk in a minute about why that's important. Um, so we're gonna get into the details of that, but I wanna kind of go down the left-hand side. So when we, when we talk about running a serverless task, first of all, what can we execute inside of a serverless task? Using a serverless task, we can execute the following types of SQL code. A single SQL statement, a calls to a stored procedure, and procedural logic using Snowflake scripting. With what can't run in serverless tasks, so UDFs, um, functions that contain Java code, stored procedures written in Scala using Snowpark, or the, you, that call UDFs that contain Java code. So you can't use, uh, can't run any of those in serverless tasks. So when people will ask, well, what about the billing of serverless tasks? We know when we run a task, we understand what the billing is, right? If when we run a, a managed task that we're controlling the, the warehouse size, uh, then we're going to pay for the time that that warehouse is running. So if we have a task that runs on on our our uh, consumption warehouse, we call it consumption warehouse, and that warehouse is set to spin down after five minutes to uh, suspend after five minutes and that task runs for a minute, that, that warehouse is gonna to continue to run for five minutes, so we're paying for five minutes of, of credits of that warehouse, right? So for a serverless task, uh, because we're not managing those warehouses, what we're, the, the way that the billing works is that uh, we're charged a 1.5 times multiplier for the, uh, the Snowflake managed compute resources. Um, and there's also some, some cloud services time. So what that means is, Let's say we had a task and it ran for an hour on an extra small, that would be 1.5 credits, whereas a normal virtual warehouse that runs for an hour is, is one credit. So it's 1.5 uh, is the multiplier. Now, one of the things that you need to understand here is that we don't have to, when we're talking about the Snowflake managed compute resources with a serverless task, we're only being billed for the actual compute resource usage. So if that task runs for 10 seconds, we're getting billed for 10 seconds, not for 10 seconds and then three minutes that the warehouse is taking before it suspends. So only that uh, actual time when that is running and the charges are calculated based on the total usage of the resources, including cloud services, and it's measured in the compute hours. So that's what's going on there. Um, we can, if you set up a task, we can schedule the tasks, uh, but we can also manually execute a task. This wasn't always the case. When we first uh, had the ability to create tasks, uh, if we wanted to test that task out, we had to schedule it to run in a minute and then we'd, we'd let that uh, we could go look at it. Now we can actually manually execute a task. So any task that we create, we can run, and I'll show you using the execute task command, I'll show you when we jump over to Snowflake in the demo, um, that we can, just run a task at any point in time using the execute task. We can also schedule tasks. So we can schedule tasks using minutes. Um, so we could say, run this task every 10 minutes or every 60 minutes or every five minutes. Um, or we can schedule them using cron. So we could use the, the cron, I'm sure everybody's uh, familiar with that. So we could say, all right, we want this task to run on Monday and Wednesday and Friday at 3 a.m. Or, or whatever it is that we want to do. So we could do our fancy little cron set up and, and do the schedule. Hey folks, thanks for checking out this cut from our broadcast. To see the full show, click on the link in the video description. Also check out our learning center, which has white papers, events, live streams, and short explainer videos on a wide range of data management topics. And of course, if you like our content, please share it on LinkedIn. That really means a lot to us. Thanks again for checking us out, and we hope to see you in our next broadcast.